Alrighty, hi guys. I know the light's a little bit yellow, it is a little bit late. Um, it's been a busy Saturday and I have wine. Hooray, it's Saturday and I'm talking to myself. It's fabulous. Mm. Alrighty, so welcome to Me Made May Day 16? Is it the 16th of May? Maybe? <laughs> no idea? Let's hope so. Hold on, I have a diary. Um, yes, yeah, Saturday the 16th of May. Welcome! Um, so yes, this is my Me Made May challenge, documenting wearing my Me Maids for a month. Um, so far I've decided that I'm not a capsule wardrobe kind of a person. But first let's, I'll talk about capsule wardrobe and then, um, since the whole style book thing didn't really work out, um, like analyzing my style didn't work for me. Um, I thought I'd show you some books that I do get fashion inspiration from. Um, but okay, so those two things second. First, I mean, you've seen all of this. I'm pretty sure you've seen this top, or maybe I was laying around on something else. But this is just a uh, black wool skivvy, same as all my other skivvies, but black. Uh, it's a rib knit, um, it's the same wool blend as that green one. But this is all of the black that was left. The green I have made like three tops out of and I've still got more. Um, yeah, it was just a product that didn't get used. I'm sorry, the lighting's really yellow. Um, it's kind of throwing me a bit. Do you know, I don't know if it's like Ikea all over the world or just Ikea Australia. But when you buy lamps, which I've got a standing lamp and ceiling lamps from Ikea, they only have warm light globes, not cool light globes. I've always bought cool light globes. I mean, I live in Australia where it's hot. I want something that feels cool. Or is that just me? <laughs> it might just be me. Anyway, little rant aside. Skivvy, done. Um, the jacket, again, you've also seen this one before. It's a knit version of um, Butterick, the set for Butterick B6244. I think this makes a great waterfall cardi, and I am going to make another one. I've already got fabric to make one in cream. Um, and the skirt, again, you've seen this before, but I only wore it with its matching jumper, so it looked like kind of a one-piece or a dress. But this is it by itself. Do do Like so. Giant pockets that stick out at the hips. They make me look like I've got hips. Love it. Love it. Um, yeah, and it's French terry. Um, fabric was from Spotlight, but maybe one or two winters ago. Well, maybe it was just last winter. Don't know. Um, the shape is like this because I've taken it in at the darts, but not at the hip, because when I made it, I was a little bit bigger. Um, or, actually, look, let's be honest. When I made it, I probably wasn't bigger. It's just stretched out. I haven't lost weight. But yeah, seen this pattern before. It's a knitwit vintage 80s number. And apparently it's this skirt, which looks longer and way more pegged than the skirt that I'm wearing. Um, see? The skirt that I'm wearing is not that long. My legs are pretty short. Anyway, so that's the outfit today. Now, I was thinking about the fact that I've managed to confine myself by just doing me maids to a capsule wardrobe. Um, and this is my capsule kind of fall winter wardrobe. And in the past, I kind of looked at the idea of, um, I think the lady's name is Courtney Carver. She has Project 333, which is where 33 items for three months, and then you redo your wardrobe, so keeping some things and changing other things every three months, um, which is supposed to keep up with the seasons, obviously. Um, and when I'd heard that, I thought that there's just no way that I can live with 33 items. And that includes shoes. So I thought I'd count up what I have done so far. And it's only been just over two weeks. And I'm already, I'm, I'm so over it. <laughs> I'm so over it. Um, like I look at all the other beautiful things in my wardrobe. And I don't think I have a particularly big wardrobe. Like I know people, I mean, or maybe it is that I don't compulsively shop and buy a lot of stuff. Unless it's thrifting, in which case I might buy a lot, but then I'll return most of it. 
I, I won't return it for the money back. I'll just give it back to them clean. Um, cause asking for a refund at a thrift shop is really low. Don't. Um, right. Anyway, I think I have a lot of things in my wardrobe that are very, very old, but obviously I have a lot of things because this wardrobe that I'm working with at the moment is 31 items, not including shoes. So if I was including shoes, it would be heaps more. Um, I wouldn't be making it into the project 333 status, but as it is, just in case it interests you, and maybe I can line them all up at the end or something and you can see, but there are two sort of cardigans or wraps like the one I was wearing earlier. Um, you've only seen that one. I don't think I've shown you the other one. Um, four jumpers, 11 knit tops and three woven tops, uh, five skirts, three of which I don't think are really warm enough. Um, I have worn them, but I just don't think that they're quite warm enough for the weather that's coming. Um, so five skirts, three pairs of pants, which I've concluded is not enough. One dress um, and two bodysuits, so 31 items. Um, yeah, I mean, 11 knit tops and like three woven tops seems like a lot. And the fact that there's no jackets in that or scarves. I haven't included any of my other accessories. Um, yeah, so in terms of like what I'm making me made, it's a little bit unbalanced. I mean, I knew that I was definitely doing lots of tops and that I actually was going to really need bottoms, which is why I made those red pants. And hopefully tomorrow being Sunday, I can make myself some other new things. Um, we'll see. I've still got jobs to do for other people that I intended to get done this week and haven't gotten done. Um... Yeah, I mean, like, what would you say would be a perfect capsule wardrobe? I mean, I would probably include way more dresses. There's only one, and a dress can be a whole outfit. But then again, you don't get to mix and match it with things. And I really want more cardigans. Like, in my normal wardrobe, I have a lot more, like, short, button-up, fitted cardigans, as well as button-up shirts. And then I would probably normally do a shirt over the top of this, and then even a cardigan, and... Um, a scarf. So I'm pretty pared back. Um, it's a bit hard you watching this and not knowing what I normally wear really, isn't it? Because you've only seen me do this. Anyway, another sip of wine. Why not? Mm. Since I was thinking that these um, style advice type books aren't really working for me, um, I think now, I've, I've really thought about it, and I'll hit it somewhere. On the 14th, like I did a video all answering the questions from the curated, the very beginning of the curated closet. And it was all fine, kind of. I mean, it was a lot of blather, and I don't think that um, everybody really needs to hear every thing about, you know, what I think of my style over the past two weeks. It was just way too much information. Um, and, you know, my evolving style of the past, etc, etc. Ah, now I've lost it. But the question that was in here that threw me was how do you think other people see your style kind of thing? Um, oh, here we go, here we go. Uh, Subconsciously or not, our clothes send a message about who we are, our values and personality. What message does your current look send and what would you like it to send? And I just had real issues with thinking about too much about what other people think of what I look like. And who was it? Was it Oscar Wilde? Who said, what other people think about you is none of your business? Sorry, that was a dog. <laughs> yeah, she's got it. Yeah. <laughs> she's got a funny nose. But yeah, what other people think about you is none of... What other people think about me is none of my business. I'm not really worried about what I'm sending out into the world. So yeah, that was when that book lost me. Which is why I much preferred the Love to Sew podcast with Stasia. Um, of Stasia Star School or Star School with Stasia. You know, that one which was very much about just express yourself and really what does it matter what other people think and be brave 
Just be brave. So, with that in mind, I do much prefer some brave style choices. And this is where I get my inspiration, which is really, at the moment, these three books. Now, we'll start with the mildest one first, which is a reformed library book. Um, it's called Vintage Fashion Collecting and Wearing Designer Classics. Now, I did go through a phase where I wore a lot of vintage, but I actually just think that vintage fashion is just... It's got a lot more interesting pattern techniques and more interesting details that in this fast fashion, everything's streamlined, everything's a copy world, I don't think we really get any more. Um, so, like, for example, this suit. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it, but I'm going to try my very, very best. Um, it's like pleating down the jacket and then it splits at the bottom of the peplum at the back and that this is like slightly asymmetrical not down the front and then she's going like there's so many details in this suit it's insane um and i think in books like this you you don't have to um just like wear it vintage but you can get some great ideas like her top it's got ruching all through the bust to the buttons and then underneath, and then ruching again all around the neck and the neck gathers. I mean, it's obviously a very lightweight fabric. It's just beautiful. Um, yeah, so ideas from, from, yeah, so that's vintage fashion. Um, this one, I mean, they're all, they're all a bit retro. Nothing's modern. Um, this book is my newest. And I love it. This is Rebel Threads, Clothing of the Bad, Beautiful and Misunderstood by Roger K. Burton. And this guy, I think, um, has done or lent his collection out to a lot of films um, for, you know, like Teddy Boys and Bad Boys and, you know, um, and girls and girls. But it's just, he, you can see the clothes, like... You know, it's just great photos of actual vintage clothes. Like this dress that sort of comes down and then this huge, like, bowling pin print. I think it's just great. Um, something slightly more rebel than a fit and flare 50s dress. Um, there's lots of menswear in here. Um, and the way that the mannequins are posed, I really like. Like, the girls... Have some attitude. Uh, come on, find a favourite, Sim. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Bad girls. All in the rolled up jeans and then these jackets. Um, just think it's, it's a great style. And I mean, I don't think we wear blazers in that kind of way anymore. And yeah, a couple of little vintage photos. I mean, look at her attitude. In her men's jacket. Cute. Um, oh, this lady. In her faux leopard and lurac. Seriously, would you mess with that? <laughs> Especially walking in with this guy. I mean, that jacket. Wow. It's amazing. Whereas, like, I think... In today's culture, we can just be so bland. Like, even the girls who dress, you know, edgy or dark or goth or... It can just be so formulaic. You know, I've got the same kinds of tattoos. Um, you know, oh, yeah. I mean, mind you, some of them are so skinny and gorgeous. Seriously, I'd kill to look like that. But it's just, yeah. I mean, and again, like, these are tribes as well. You know, like, the biker leather tribe. They're just tribal dressing as well. But it's just, it's just different to see tribes that we don't have anymore, I guess. Um, and then just how they put those outfits together. Like, I do love the little, yeah, three-quarter jeans rolled up um, with a blazer and a scarf. Cute. But, okay, book number three is uh, 78 to 87. London Youth by Derek Ridges. 
And it's, yeah, photographs that were taken between 78 and 87 of London youth. And, I mean, they're just... I don't know, these people seem a bit more real than what you would see. If you were scrolling Pinterest, you just wouldn't see photos of people like this. You know? Like, things are just... They're not so polished. I love it. I mean, her. Look at her. She's fabulous. Those sleeves. Wow. Um, yeah. So that's what I've been doing with my glass of wine, reading my fancy picture books, trying to think of ways to restyle the 31 items that I'm allowed to wear for the next two weeks. I might make some more things tomorrow. Um, yeah. I Just as a little side note, I bought this book online because it was the cheapest way to get it. And it's one of those, you know, you see a, fan, a book in like a fancy bookshop and it's got plastic wrap on it and you can't see what's inside. Um, and then when you finally get it, it's just a little bit disappointing. That's this book. I'll just let you know, it's, it's a little bit disappointing. Um, so this is In Vogue. And it's meaty. Like, I mean, it depends what it is that you want to see, I guess. But in terms of seeing photographs of beautiful outfits... It's not what this book's about. This is, pho this is beautiful photographs and beautiful models. But half the time, I swear, it, oh, now, I'm not, now it's not going to happen. Um, half the time I swear I open it to somebody who's naked. Like, or wearing a swimsuit. And now I've just opened looked at six pages and I haven't found one. It's hilarious. Um, or like, yeah, a whole bunch of face shots. Um, covers, covers that are just faces. Oh, here we go. Naked people. See what I mean? I was like, this doesn't tell me anything about clothes. I mean, I'm sure they're beautiful photographs. And then nobody else but that woman could look good in that pose. Because that's not a flattering pose. Um, but, you know, like, yeah, swimsuits. Um, I wanted pretty clothes. Yeah. More naked. On that note, <laughs> that's all I have to say. Um, and as much as like I have heaps of Vogue magazines, it's probably kind of true, you know. Fashion magazines you probably don't get much about the clothes themselves. Like if you really want details and like wearable style, I mean, there's definitely, oh yeah, see, the pinnacle of, yeah, that's totally wearable. Like, one of those punk girls would really be walking down the street looking like that, right? No. And I mean, she looks terribly sunburnt for a start. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's all I got for today. Um, happy Saturday. Uh, okay, so... I'll try and get some subscribers up, I guess. Please subscribe, like, press the like button if you liked it. Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear what you thought. Um, yeah, have a lovely weekend. See ya.